Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Tata Safari Red Dark Edition. This is the top of the line variant. The XZA Plus optional which also gets a dash. The Safari is available in 34 variants because there's a 6 seater, there's a 7 seater and of course plenty of limited edition models as well. The price range starts at rupees 19.07 lakhs. The Red Dark Edition is available in 3 variants. This being the top of the line is priced at rupees 30.52 lakhs. On road Mumbai, of course. Now, if you plan to buy a car like this, obviously you're going to take a loan. So if you pay a down payment of around 25%, you end up paying 8 lakhs as a down payment and have a monthly EMI of around rupees 47,000 for 5 years. Now imagine you get help to pay the EMI by earning from your car. But how? Say hello to the Zoom Car Host Program, which is a reliable and trustworthy way to get returns on your investment. With the Zoom Car Host Program, as a host, you can share your car on Zoom Car and earn passive income consistently without putting any extra effort. You get to decide when you want to share your car, which could be from a few hours to a few months or even a year long. You have complete control on the duration. You also get to decide how much you want to charge for sharing your car. To join the Zoom Car host program, you don't need any special knowledge or skill. Onboarding takes just 30 minutes. You can also directly interact with the guest on the platform and you don't have to be physically present to serve bookings as the car can be unlocked from the app itself. There's 24 by 7 customer service as well. Now you might wonder about the risk of giving your car to a stranger, right? Zoom car has that covered as well. All the guests are verified and validated on the platform. Their app is seamlessly integrated with security devices which can be easily installed thereby helping you to monitor your car all through the app itself. And in case of damage, Zoom car pays for them and repairs the vehicle through its garage partners. It's all well thought out. So make sure to check out the Zoom car host program by clicking on the link in the top right corner of the screen right now. Coming back to the Safari, it's got more features and it also gets ADAS. That's the reason to have this panel right here. There is the camera. Straight away, let's open the engine bay. Oh my god, this is so heavy. Insanely heavy. No hydraulic struts, which is disappointing. You get insulation there. You can hear the engine. It's quite loud. Little bit of vibrations also. That's the reason that thing is moving right now. It says Cryotech 170 right here. And it's too hot, so I'm just going to shut it. Now, this color is the... Some black, I don't know. I don't even remember. I tried to learn it 10,000 times. I just can't remember how Tata Motors marketing department comes with some weird names for color. So, basically, this is a black color. And it gets a black grill, which is basically piano black. And one of the tri-stars is actually finished in red. Thank God they did not finish all the tri-stars in red because that would look too on your face. Tata logo is also finished in black. This is the DRL. These are the main lights. This is actually for the high beam. This is for the low beam. Projector setup. Halogen. Halogen fog lights as well. The car does not get all LEDs for rupees 30 lakhs, which is surprising. So obviously, complete black treatment because Henry Ford said you can have it in any color as long as it is black. The DRL is active even when the indicator is on, but you really cannot see the DRL that much. And this brings me to the side because they haven't really done much on the alloy wheel part. It's the same alloy wheels which you get on the regular Safari, but finished in charcoal black. In fact, the charcoal black finishing on the alloy wheels is also there on the Adventure Persona as well as the Gold Editions. So nothing new here. I'm tired of these alloy wheels. We need new ones. Tire size 235, 60, 18. Red colored brake calipers. There you can see the suspension. Side molding, which continues all throughout. It says dark here. Hashtag dark. In fact, on this chrome, it's written in red because this is the red dark. There's a camera here. It obviously gets a 360 degree parking camera and indicator right there as well. There's a request sensor on the other side. The Safari is basically the Harrier Pro Max and here they have given a sort of a design for better headroom in the third row and also theater style seating. But it will kind of remind you of the Discovery. It will also remind you of the older real Safari which is on my t-shirt which I've already seen by the way. It says Safari here, shark fin antenna. Everything is finished in black which is kind of cool. It somehow suits the car. Anyways, let's get into the rear. And you'll be surprised that Tata Motors has done a fantastic job because it's a red duck, so it gets red seats, red interiors, which look quite nice. There's this diamond-like quilting as well. Seats are really nice and comfortable. I've reclined this completely. I can unrecline it as well, like this. But you know what is the problem? I have to use both hands firstly. The problem is that... I don't understand why I cannot tumble this seat to get inside. I have to go from the 
middle part of things for the six seater for the seven seater obviously it tumbles here you get seat ventilation a feature which you don't get in such a segment of car so a big thumbs up to tata motors for offering such a feature here and obviously the seats can be moved ahead and behind when i move it all the way ahead nobody can fit in here absolutely nobody can when i push it all the way behind well i think last row will get a bit compromised scooped out seat back magazine holder there's some paper there okay there's some storage right here and usb usb c charging sockets as well ac vents are placed here on the b pillar no height adjustable seat belt six airbags hook handle to hold on to there's a light placement here on the top says airbag here now in order to increase the legroom and room which is actually good there is a boss mode so you can actually move the angle of the front seat front co passenger seat and you can also move the seat ahead and all this is electric which is again awesome under thigh support is not the best though and there is an armrest individual armrest for both the passengers in the second row quite nice says jbl here space to keep your phone door pockets are big enough it shows you the bottle sign so yeah that's practical as well nice leather finishing here on the handle as well so some really good bits and i can feel that i'm sitting a bit higher so of course it is theater style seating which gives me a good view of what's ahead everything is finished in black here as well so yeah they have become really dark here that's the reason they call it <laughs> dark edition and we put this up isofix child seat mounts let's get into the third row and i will straight away push the seat a little bit ahead because it's way too behind and now we are going to get into the third row getting in and out is not easy because If you're a little fat like me, okay, I'm not fat, but still, it's a little difficult. Leg room and knee room is okay. It's not bad at all. They've scooped this out. Under thigh support is poor, but it's not as bad as in other cars. USB charging socket, USB C. Some storage space here. AC vent placement has been given right there. You get proper seat belts. Yes, but I don't think there's a middle passenger which is allowed here. There is the Easter egg. AC controls right here. So yeah, blower controls have been given here. There's a sort of a net there, and you can slot the seat belt right inside as well. Window area is decent. There's a light placement here on the top, and now it is the difficult part of getting out. Okay, you can also slot the seat belt right here. So let's just get out. It's a little difficult getting in and out. That's the only problem I see. Otherwise, this car is decently comfortable. This is a six seater. There's a seven seater version as well. Door shuts not with a proper third. Okay, because the keys in my pocket. It's telling me the keys in your pocket inside with voice, and it is also sounding the alarm to tell me that the key is with me. Red colored brick calipers at the rear. It gets discs, which originally the Harrier did not get. The Safari obviously got it. Now at the rear, things are pretty much similar. The Tata logo is finished in black. Vocal for local. High mounted stop lamp. Sort of a spoiler treatment. In fact, you get a camera here, which is obviously something standard. Says Safari right there. Bumper is not body colored. You get parking sensors at the rear, but only two sensors. That's weird. Is there the exhaust here? No, this is fake. What the fluff? Fessel can't speak of truth. Really disappointed with the fake stuff happening here because the real exhaust is somewhere there. Yeah, that is the real exhaust of the vehicle. Meanwhile, spare wheel is placed here, which is actually smaller size. So it's 235. The width is the same, but it's a 16 incher and it is not an alloy. So cost cutting kicked in. Yo, let's open the boot, which is. not easy to open because you have to actually press a button right here so that could have been done better very small boot it's like i think 73 liters with all the rows up so chintu mintu boot but then you can recline this yeah okay need to push it yeah there you go oh 50 50 split of course to increase the boot carrying capacity so now it's a four seater with a big enough boot otherwise it's a six seater with no boot space last row i think was best for kids only but adults can also fit in sometimes not all the times where is the warning triangle where is the jack at least the warning triangle is placed here i believe the jack will also be lying somewhere underneath it also gets these cushions on the headrest which is kind of cool nice but this is hard this is not soft come on they could have given softer stuff let's just shut this and let's get inside before that let me show you the key stop ringing here the key okay this is to lock the car this is to unlock the car this is to turn on the lights and this is to open the boot of the vehicle You get two keys with the car. It has dark here on the headrest, airbag here, powered seats with memory function. Yeah, powered seats always there in the new Safari. But you know what? It gets memory function. You can save up to three people settings. Seat ventilation for the front seats. The co-driver seat also gets power function, four-way adjust, which is not there in the Harrier. By the way, this is a six-way adjust. It also has the welcome feature, wherein 
when you get into the car for the first time it automatically goes behind so it's easy for you to get in and automatically comes ahead and all that it does so that easier to get out really old switch gear this is coming from all the way back to the indica door pockets are actually big enough there is an umbrella holder here and you can see this red color light yeah it has got ambient lighting so ambient lighting is red colored in this car otherwise it is blue in the safari which comes around the door as well as on the panoramic roof in the vehicle it has this nice finishing in fact it has this all black finishing on the dashboard which looks quite nice even the tata logo is finished in black you get a lot of piano black here and there which is again premium enough and here you get adjustment for the outside rear view mirrors let's get inside okay firstly let's shut the indicators and the lights automatic headlights automatic wipers this is the clock glove box is decent size it has a compartment on the top wherein the car's manual has been kept and okay this is a big fat manual which is how many pages 355 pages so you have a lot to read <laughs> when you're bored waiting for someone in the car let's just shut this in fact there's a pen holder here as well below here there is a 12 volt charging socket this is getting the cooling function the glove box does not get it in fact usb and usb c charging sockets two and a half cup holders what is two and a half i don't understand but anyways electric parking brake and auto hold has always been there in the new safari gear lever feels nice to hold tri arrow pattern i don't know why tata motors is obsessed with mercedes but anyways let's actually get into drive so i can show you this is actually the terrain mode selector so it's got three terrain modes as well left is mode is active rough road mode is activated city drive mode activated you understood the modes okay i don't have to explain this is the button to get into the 360 degree parking camera this is for downhill assist and there is a wireless charging pad usb charging socket here regular usb again tri arrow pattern they have put the tri arrow pattern wherever they could find space to do that this is obviously auto dimming light placement here on the top and multiple buttons for sunroof operations the best thing is in order to open the sun blind you press this button in order to open the sunroof you have two different buttons one is to open and one is to tilt it kind of nice massive panoramic roof really brings in a lot of airy feeling and then there's red ambient lighting from here okay i'm going to do one thing i'm going to open the sunroof there i press a button and there it opens it also gets the global close function which means that in case oh my god the sun is so bright in case you leave this open and get out of the car it will automatically close it as well it has got 200 voice commands it understands six different languages here you get a mirror with two lights here you get nothing at all which is kind of surprising why is it so plain and basic ergonomics could be better because my knee actually hits this place right here where they have actually put leather because they know this issue is there so ergonomic design flaw is obviously there in this car and you've got some buttons here this is for the fog light control this is for hazard lights and this is for the drive mode eco and sport ac controls you have these physical buttons which is quite nice ac is actually a chiller which is something i really appreciate buttons for cruise control these are actually the buttons to browse through that cluster and these are the buttons for the audio system and voice commands in fact i am going to turn the screen on okay it lets me decide the clock face which is quite cool and uh, these are the controls for the wipers i will do the wiper test when driving the car control for the headlights now let's use one of the voice commands ac chalu karo zarur ac chalu kar diya hai <laughs> funky anyways let's turn on the air conditioning so the bigger change happens to be the new instrument cluster if you notice this is a 7 inch screen right there but the earlier safari also has or rather the regular safari also has a 7 inch cluster so what's different here well in the older or rather the regular safari the 7 inch was occupying almost all the space other than the speedometer which was analog of course here things are a little different on the left side you have got the tachometer which i'll show you right now On the right side you have got the temperature meter as well as the fuel gauge and the gauge cluster is now new it's a 7 inch screen it looks better now because there's a lot of information here so we get into layout there are three layout there's a digital view there's a minimal view it's not very impressive as such it gets the job done i would have expected even better but hey there's a lot of stuff right here in fact i will just show you right now i can get into settings and in settings i have got lot of things to play around with In fact, it even tells me what is the font used by this instrument cluster. It is Google Open Sans fonts. Unnecessary information. I don't know why they have it. Trip info will give you information about the distance you have traveled, what is the average fuel efficiency. It will show you the car with instant fuel efficiency as well. But when you get into driver assist, it will give you ADAS details, driver attention monitor. What I really, really, really like is the vehicle info because it will obviously tell you what is the DEF level and quality. But is a tire pressure monitor it has a power and torque meter as well yeah that is cool mm -hmm. mean 
while it also has a g-force meter so that you can obviously judge the amount of body roll you're going through it has got notifications which will just basically tell you some notifications navigation is basically showing you the compass because the engine comes from the compass now so they had to do that of course that's about it kind of cool right and it also shows you a lot of information here and there like lane keep assist lane departure warning odometer trip meter distance to empty and which is the drive mode you're driving in right now now this is again a new screen this is a bigger 10.25 inch screen the earlier one was an 8.8 .8 inch screen this is way better than before dramatically better than before it has an air purifier with an aqi monitor telling you what is the aqi levels like and then you can just browse through so very slick in terms of operation let me get into this so that i can show you multiple things here you can get into the settings and everything it has got apple carplay and android auto connectivity both of which actually work wirelessly let's listen to an audio right away audio quality is actually quite nice let's get into the surround view camera the 360 degree view camera there i can browse through multiple things and i can change the camera angle from here it's a beautiful screen here's a 3d view and the 3d view is also fantastic you can just like move it around like that isn't that super duper awesome so yeah side views whatnot it has fantastic in fact i can change stuff here increase the volume as well let's get out of this i'm going to give an indicator it has got a lane watch camera so depending on the indicator it will show you exactly the view from the outside rear view mirrors we also can get into a video demos to show you the quality of the screen so here we go this is a very old car and then, Just like gold, diamonds and and then all of a sudden the audio system turns on I'm actually quite impressed by the screen. I think it's very slick. The only problem is certain people who have got the car are complaining that the screen is flickering and turning on and off. So Tata Motors really needs to work on its quality right now because things need to be a bit better. You can't offer customers such issues when you give them the car, of course. So here you can get into driver assistance system. It has got traffic sign recognition, high beam assist, lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, door open alert. Blind spot detection and lane change alert, rear collision warning. So, lot of ADAS features in this car. And let's get into vehicle. Here you can configure the light seats. And ambient lighting has only one color. Please turn on the park lamp to actually activate the ambient lighting. It's showing blue, which is then the regular safari. This car actually has red. Obviously, it will have red now because it is a red dark edition. It is not the 64 color dark edition. So, it does not have 64 colors for the ambient lighting. There you can see the safari right here. We get into reverse. Uh, yeah, this is the reverse parking camera. I've already shown you the camera by the way it has got adaptive guidelines as well so definitely a way better screen now so kudos to Tata Motors for finally listening to customer feedback and making this change and obviously it has got connected car tech let's get out sunroof is open I will lock the car yeah there the sunroof automatically closes so cool stuff happening right here but in terms of mechanicals it is more or less the same another cool bit about this car is that I can actually open the fuel flap from here i don't have to open it from inside says diesel here there is no petrol on offer let's start driving right away okay time to drive first things first let me adjust the steering wheel which is adjustable both for reach as well as rate by the way there's a light in the boot i don't know how i missed it and on the other side you have this speaker i think it's a subwoofer anyways first and foremost let's turn off the air conditioning we get into drive mode it also has voice please fasten driver seat belt alerts okay here sport drive mode activated this lady tells you a lot of things if the keys outside the car she'll say some nonsense on the inside so we are in the best mode and i will turn on the camera system as well i'm actually going to put the 3d camera right now which will only work till i think 20 kilometers per hour after that it will deactivate so electric parking breakdown and we're just going to drive at real slow speeds so you can actually see this camera in motion it's a beautiful camera i don't know how tata motors managed to put so much tech in the safari because the older safari was everything but tech but this is kind of cool and then that's gone so here the driver rear view monitor i have turned on left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off and off we go is that an upshift to 4 to reach 100 kilometers per hour i guess so so there is this 
beautiful lane watch camera right now which works fantastically well and then it turns off the driver rear view monitor i have to turn that on again there you can see it is blinking to tell me someone is in my blind spot so yeah the ada systems work really well mechanically it's the same as before so 2 liter engine which is a diesel four cylinder unit coming from the fca group of course which also powers the jeep compass as well as the mg hector producing 170 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque with a weight of around 850 kg 1850 kg this is 800 no 1850 kg it doesn't really feel heavy as such and performance is very slick there is some turbo lag which is actually well contained because of this gearbox which is sourced from hyundai this is a 6 speed torque converter automatic gearbox which is decently slick in terms of shifts it's not very fast but it gets the job done and you have manual option also here you can manually take control of things if you so wish here i'm going to downshift yeah I'm downshifting or upshifting. I also don't realize because the gearbox is so slow now in terms of shifts that I don't realize. Only here, actually, the tachometer isn't that interesting. <laughs> so I didn't even bother looking at it. It will not give you complete manual control of things. Red line comes in slightly around 4,000 rpm, around 4, 4,500 rpm in between that. It's not very easily readable. But even in this bright sun now, the displays are actually quite visible, which is quite nice. So performance is actually decent. There's this diesel clatter at lower speeds and at idle also. You can hear that. You can hear the suspension noise, can, can you? Of course you can. So the suspension is a bit noisy, which is quite surprising. Ride is good, but low speed ride is better. As the speed increases, the ride is not that good. And when you hit a bump, now there's that judder which comes on the inside. I can feel that judder. I can feel that kickback happening. It happens on the steering wheel as well. Look at this. Okay, I'm going to keep shut when we encounter some bad patches. There, shakes, vibrations. and you can feel all that on the inside as well so performance is actually good enough it will do a top speed of around 160 170 km per hour but then this is not a car you would push to those speeds at all engine is best in the mid range actually in the top end again it becomes very loud and vocal brakes are good but the pedal feel is actually quite poor so uh, it's not well modulated as such so brake pedal feel could be definitely better in this car look at the amount of sound which is coming from the engine so that could be better for sure the steering wheel is a bit weird in this car which i'll talk we'll launch it once again i can't find a traction control button at all and because the seat ventilation is on right now my back is actually freezing and my hands are sweating anyways time for the brake test that's not very reassuring the tire noise anyways left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go So gear shifts do take some time they're not very quick and over bad patches of the road that judder from the suspension is not very reassuring around the corners it's a look at it wash out at the front under steering oh my god how is that happening front wheel drive of course this is a monocoque platform so it feels easy to drive but the steering is very weird i'll tell you why at low speeds it's extremely heavy it's a hydraulic unit so it feels quite heavy at lower speeds but as the speeds increase you would expect it to become heavier still right no it goes in the opposite direction the steering is actually lighter at higher speeds which does not really inspire confidence and feels kind of vague and inconsistent in terms of feel and feedback so yeah it's a heavy steering at low speeds which makes you gym and driving the car in the city like right now and now is the time for me to actually use the cameras so here we go into 3d view now this is a big advantage because you can exactly see where you are going ground clearance is decent enough there are three drive modes on offer there is eco there is city and there is sport we are driving in sport mode which obviously gives the best performance eco is obviously for better efficiency and city is like a mix of both and then we have got these terrain modes as well which just alters the esp to ensure that you are able to drive this car over slight mild off road conditions as well because the ground clearance is decent as well so you don't have to worry about that why is the innova looking like a transformer there i have no idea let's use the wipers okay there's decent amount of spray on offer now in terms of adas it has got plenty of adas function i think 10 or 12 i think it's 10 actually so there is zero cross traffic alert there's high beam assist there is like i've already mentioned all of them but i will actually show them to you right now so that collision warning is coming <laughs> even at lower speed 
yeah the, it's applying brakes also that sound came of applying brakes so it has got forward collision warning which works for cars vehicles it works for cyclists it also works for pedestrians which is very good it has also got um, automatic emergency braking which the car just did right now lane departure warning and lane keep assist is also there so all the systems work fantastically well in fact the blind spot monitor is very alert so it tells you exactly all the time when there's someone in your blind spot so it blinks like that and it's visible in the day so i think tata motors has done a fantastic job in terms of the adas functions of this car but my main concern is that tata motors keeps talking about safety all the time and obviously they are friends with global encap because that's the only reason why they are able to release test results as per their timing right when they are going to launch the car according to the promotion and marketing so they are obviously good friends with global encap so why don't they send the tata safari and the harrier to test i mean to global encap for testing that's something i simply do not understand why they have not sent this car yet there because this is a car which probably might not get complete five stars from global encap purely for the reason that uh, the way this car engine has been designed is not okay is that a car on test i don't know because it has only three doors so like i was telling you if this car was going to get five star rating tata motors would have definitely sent it to global encap for testing but they have not because probably it might not get full five stars because this engine sourced from uh, the fca group has a small issue that under collision now the abc pedals they don't collapse well enough to actually protect the occupants so that's a bit of a bummer and that's one of the reasons why this car is not yet sent for testing but i hope tata motors proves me wrong and really shows that desh kaloha can perform extremely well now around the corners there's obviously body roll and then the inconsistent steering feel doesn't make it a very exciting car to drive but it does feel rugged it's running the omega arc which is basically the d8 platform from land rover it's derived from that and it does feel quite nice to drive as such the only thing is the engine is very vocal and the suspension is quite noisy grip levels are fine but the noise from the suspension is a bit too much and the judder and vibration as well so that's something i don't know why is it happening they need to actually iron out this issue because tata motors is well known for ride quality as well as steering feel and this car doesn't really have that the horn on is decent time to check the lane keep assist and there it is actually telling me when i'm going out of a lane come on put put me back in the lane it's just telling me lane departure and i'm departing only and it's not doing anything right now so that's one of the things so in terms of competition obviously the mahindra xuv 700 is a direct rival to this car or you can say the scorpio n as well but then the scorpio n is a body on frame and this is obviously a monoclock so monocoque but did i say something else anyways let's try and do the lane keep assist function right now Come on put me back put me back put me back no it's saying lane departure you can leave the lane <laughs> so that's happening but i like the way the whole system works and obviously kafi is really rugged only thing is my knee is feeling a little uncomfortable right now that's it let's actually turn on this driver rear view monitor and then i feel like giving an indicator and then this shuts as well quality of the screen is actually good enough i really like it as well Yeah, it is a bit loud somehow at high speeds, and then you can feel the movements and the. Can you guys feel it? It's a smooth road, okay. Yeah, so I think this thing needs to be smoothened out a bit. The XUV 700 is also not very great in terms of ride, but the Scorpio N feels quite nice. Obviously, it has a lot of body roll and body movement because of body on frame platform, but that's something which will happen because of the way the car is constructed. The Safari is a hugely desirable car now with a lot of features. Like Tata Motors has gone on board by adding features, which is a good thing. And I am waiting what happens in the next five to ten years with Tata Motors and Mahindra because they are making some really fantastic cars, yeah. Just imagine Tata Motors is able to sell a car which costs more than 30 lakh rupees when they launched the Hexa nobody was willing to spend even 15 lakhs to buy a Tata car so obviously they have made improvements which are leaps and bounds better i mean the cars are leaps and bounds better than what they were a few years back and that day is not far when they will be on the global scale as well the only thing they need to do to reach there is make their own engine and stop borrowing engines from other brands because how difficult can it be to make a diesel engine and mahindra can do it obviously tata motors can do it as well and there is a thar right ahead of me now i would prefer to drive in sport mode but when i do that it's going to sip fuel quite fast there collision warning and come on okay it will not give me a downshift when i'm driving it in manual mode and i can only manually take control of things from here there are no paddle shifters on offer so that's something which 
would be a nice touch if there were paddle shifters of course because it just makes the whole drive experience more engaging the manual is definitely better <laughs> in terms of driving feel and all but the clutch is on the heavier side as well okay listen yeah that kickback is there from the steering wheel i'm not too sure if you can see it but yes that's also there so guys this is my vlog of the tata safari red dark edition the car has improved from what it was when it was initially launched with a lot more features mechanically it remains more or less the same but now it's time for tata motors to take this car to the next level i believe a facelift is coming soon enough maybe next year and with that i hope they address the ergonomic flaws and also the vibration that way we give it an eps because the steering doesn't feel better just because it's hydraulic that weight at low speeds is not needed and the lightness at high speeds is also not needed because the inconsistency is such now that you are not too sure where you are going so you have to keep counter correcting in fact there's so much slack in the center head position as well yeah look at that <laughs> i can dance like this all day long if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon and make sure to check out the zoom car host program by clicking on the top right corner of the screen